Hello everyone, I hope you guys are all having a fabulous day. Let's talk popular handbags and why I haven't added some of these to my collection. The bags that I'm going to be showcasing or highlighting in this video are the ones that I get asked the most questions on. A lot of people wonder if I'm not a fan of it because of X, Y, and Z. Is it because it's trendy? Is it because of this, that, or the other? So I thought I would delve into those a little bit more. And uh, I also wanted to tell you guys what I appreciate about each bag and then let you know the reasons as to why I don't see myself adding it to my collection anytime soon. Of course, never say never. I have certainly learned my lesson when it comes to that, uh, but still, I feel that with these, I've never really been inclined to add them to the wish list or anything like that. So I hope that you guys enjoy this video. If you do, make sure and give it a thumbs up, and without further ado, let's get started, shall we? Let's start off with the elephant in the room, shall we? The Hermes Birkin. This is the number one bag that I get asked the most questions on and why I haven't added it to my collection. Now, I think it is absolutely, absolutely gorgeous. I love the craftsmanship. I love the different sizes to choose from, the different textures to choose from, the different colors that this bag is available in. And when it comes to color, I feel that Hermes ends up knocking it out of the park every single solitary time because the colors are so vibrant, they're so vivid. And let's not forget, it's also a tote. I am a tote girl, so this bag is right up my alley. However, there are two things that hold me back. The first one being that with the price point that it has, whether it's brand new or pre-loved, um, I don't want this to be a bag that I only use occasionally. I don't want this to be a bag that I end up shelving I don't want to worry about um, I don't want to worry about the wear and tear. I don't want to put it in this protective bubble, and I don't think I can do that, you know, um, because I feel that with the price point, I, I would get nervous because it's happened before in the past, uh, not with the Birkin, but um, I just I feel like I would be so I would be so worried about how it's going to wear that I'm not going to enjoy the bag. And for me, it's about enjoying the bag, and I'm having a blast with the ones that I currently own. You know, I don't put them in that bubble. I don't worry about wear and tear, and. And um, for me, it's just about being able to use those bags without necessarily worrying so much because I feel that that takes joy from it, you know. And um, on that same note, I also think that part of me would feel that I would have to justify the price and use it a lot more often. And if I'm already kind of teetering with the, with the thought of maybe using it, maybe not using it, or I'd only use it occasionally, um, I feel like if I used it once in a blue moon, that's not what I want to go for. You know, I want to be able to put it in my rotation. I want to make sure that I'm not nervous, you know? So part of me thinks that I would use it just to use it to justify the price, but not because I enjoy it or because I love it. I don't know if that makes any sense, but it makes sense to me. Uh, now the second reason, and this is more towards buying it brand new. I have said it before, I am not a fan I am not a fan of the whole, you need to be this tall to ride this ride, all right? And what I mean by that is the fact that you can't walk into an Aramis store for the most part. I know that it's been happening a little bit more often. I've heard, um, I've heard people having greater success uh, with going into the stores and getting it uh, no problem. But for the most part, you can't walk into an, uh, to an Aramis boutique and say, you know what, I want a Birkin 35 in the black Togo leather with the gold hardware. You know, that almost never ends up happening. You have to buy um, shoes, you have to buy jewelry, you have to buy perfumes, you have to buy all these things to maybe be considered put to be put on the list to possibly get a Birkin, to possibly get a phone call. And even then, uh, unless you have a really, really good relationship with your sales associate, um, you can't really specify what it is that you want. I mean, you could tell them what you want, but if something comes in and it's purple and it's gold hardware and they offer it to you, um, I've heard people say that if you don't take that bag, then you won't end up getting another phone call for the one that you really want. And I, I mean, I'm not okay with that. I don't like that. I feel that if someone has ten to $15,000 in their hands or however they want to pay and they want to walk into a boutique and buy the bag, just let them buy the bag. Why do you have to go through all these loops? You know, and I get it. I get it. It adds to the whole exclusivity thing and they don't want everyone and their mother walking around with a Birkin, blah, blah, blah. Sure, that's great. You know, to each their own and that's definitely worked out for them. That's worked out in their favor. Um, you know, but I just, I don't like that. I don't like that. I don't want to have to jump hoops. I don't want to be considered, am I good enough to get that bag? You know, so that kind of, um, that leaves a sour taste in my mouth, 
you know, and people have said, Minnie, why don't you go the pre-loved route if you really like the bag? Because I still, I don't know, I still, I still feel like that whole thing about having to justify it and having to use it and wanting to make sure that I don't put it in that bubble always comes up to play. So I don't know, that's, <laughs> that's kind of what goes on through my mind. But do I think this bag is beautiful? Absolutely I do. Absolutely, and there's so many details that I appreciate, but those two things are the ones that end up sticking out the most in my mind. Next up, the Gucci Marmont. Anytime I talk about the Gucci Marmont line, um, I have a very unpopular opinion. Um, I've had a lot of people get really upset with me when I end up voicing uh, the way that I feel about it. I totally get why so many people love this bag. They feel that the leather is very durable. They also think that it's spacious when it comes to some of their sizes and it's very comfortable to use. And uh, they also feel that it's very versatile. So I think that's great. But there is one thing that sticks out to me like a sore thumb when it comes to this bag. And that is the fact that it has a heart on the back. Now, I know that the camera bag doesn't have the heart, um, but I feel that that heart ends up dating the bag, you know, and for the most part, I end up going for classic bags. I want bags that I'll end up standing the test of time, you know, and with that heart, I feel that it ends up putting it in some type of a time capsule. If they ended up getting rid of that heart, I would buy that bag in a heartbeat because I love the, um, I love the antique gold hardware that it has. And I feel that it really ends up complementing the colors of the bag or the colors that this bag is available in you know but that heart I just can't get over you know the heart and there have been many times that I've gone into the boutique I go to try it on I'm like okay yes yes I like this I like this and then I see that heart I'm all nope I'm out <laughs> I'm out you know you might as well put a star back there or whatever so if it wasn't for that heart I would have added this bag a long long time ago because like I said before a lot of people love so many different um, so many different details about it and they have said that it holds up incredibly incredibly well as time goes by so unfortunately the Gucci Marmont or the Gucci Marmont line um, is not for me now this next beauty has definitely made a splash. It's actually made a comeback to be honest. And it's so popular that even the bags that were on the pre-love market or on the vintage market, people started to notice an increase in prices. And I am talking about the Dior saddle bag. It's a beauty. It's a beauty for sure. You know, you have different colors to choose from. You have different materials to choose from. I love the C and the D. And I think that this bag cascades very nicely off of your shoulder, you know, and as much as I like it and as much as I love it on other people, uh, to me, it reminds me of the Louis Vuitton croissant bag that I had ages ago. Now with that bag, um, you know, when I first got it, I was super excited and I quickly realized that the shape of it um, made it a little too fussy. It wasn't as user friendly as I would have liked. Uh, so sometimes I would have to take a little bit more time. I would have to take extra time to fit my items inside just right. And every time I'd go to take them out, it'd kind of get jumbled, you know what I mean? So I think that with the shape that the, uh, that the saddle has, it's a little too similar to that croissant bag. So um, there's a part of me that I'm like, oh man, uh, you know, it's great. It's great, but I just know that I would find it to be a little too fussy. And um, I did go into the Dior boutique, um, you know, a couple months ago, and I just wanted to check them out just to see if I could solidify my opinion on it. And uh, that's what I ended up finding. You know, I put my items inside, and as soon as I put it on my shoulder, it reminded me too much of that other bag that I had um, that I had before. So, uh, unfortunately, this one is also one that um, won't be added to these guys back here. Now, as many of you know, I caught the Chanel bug a few years ago, and I've kind of stayed within that same fashion house. Uh, but this next bag, I just can't get past it, and that is the Chanel Gabrielle. Even though it is versatile because you have various ways that you can carry the bag, um, it is also lightweight. Uh, you have that aged calfskin leather. If that's the one that you go for, it's a little bit more carefree. And uh, I've heard people say that they can get away with carrying quite a few items inside. So I think that's great. Um, however, for me, I don't really like the fact that you have too many different colors when it comes to the straps. I feel that it makes the bag a little too busy. And for the most part, I do tend to go for simple handbags. So to me, simplicity always speaks volumes. Uh, 
uh, to a certain extent, but I feel that with that, you have ruthenium, you have the aged uh, gold hardware, or I just feel that it's a little too, too busy. And also with the structure that it has, you have a structured bottom and then you have a less structured top. So I think that over time, if you end up using quite a few items inside, that, um, that softer top might end up kind of um, going over the structure and uh, just the fact that it's not an overly structured handbag ends up um, not really working out for me, you know? And um, I also find that with the smaller ones, um, I'm not too keen on the opening because I feel that the opening might be a little too fussy as well. Of course, the larger one, uh, it's a little bit more spacious, it's a little bit more generous, but when you're talking about um, the smaller ones, as I said before, um, it can be a little too restricting to get your items inside if, uh, if you're at the check out or whatever the case may be you know so um, like I said a lot of people rave about this bag um, a lot of people have said that this is their number one bag when it comes to Chanel uh, but I just can't get past the busyness of the chains and also just the structure the silhouette that it has isn't something that really ends up working out for me or my lifestyle next is the Balenciaga City This to me is a classic bag from the fashion house. It's been around for a very, very long time. And I know that there's a lot of people that uh, appreciate this bag because it's versatile. It's very, very comfortable. And when it comes to their leather, I feel that Balenciaga has, um, has a beautiful type of quality, has a beautiful texture to it. Um, now for me, it's the fact that it doesn't have structure that ends up hindering me from wanting to add it to my collection. And kind of like what I said before, when it came to the Chanel Gabrielle, I want something that's a little bit more structured. I know that you can end up um, you can end up putting a uh, purse organizer or a base shaper in it. But for the most part, I want something that's not necessarily going to turn into a beautiful mess when I go to set it down, you know? And I know that's one of the features, that's one of the details that people appreciate because it does do that. It's kind of that slouchy leather. It has that, um, it has that, um, that carefree type of look to it. Um, but still, I just, uh, I, I wish it had a little bit more structure. And also I find that it has, um, it's a little busy in a sense because it has a lot of studs and it also has a lot of those straps. Straps. Those straps remind me of fringe and I'm not too keen when it comes to fringe um, in general. So um, that's, you know, those are some of the things that end up uh, holding me back, but I still appreciate it because it has just been around for a very, very long time. And it is certainly, as I said before, a classic. And last but not least, the Louis Vuitton bum bag. I think this bag is pretty cool, right? I think it's pretty freaking cool. It's versatile. You can use it on your shoulder. You can use it as a fanny pack. I've seen people use it cross body. And how liberating, how awesome is it to be hands-free and have all of your items right up front? You know what I mean? You don't have to worry that someone's messing with your bag back here or it's too heavy or anything like that. You're hands-free, you're out and about, and you have all your stuff right up front. I think that's pretty cool. It's uh, it's comfortable, it's spacious, it fits a lot more than people might think. Um, however, however, for me, the reason why I appreciate this bag from afar is because I did try it on. I did try it on and it didn't go very well, all right? Because you know how, like I said, some people use it crossbody. I try to put it on crossbody, no. There's too much going on up here. There's too much going on. My chest is too big. It almost feels like I'm suffocating the bag. And even though it is great to be hands-free, I also tried it on as a fanny pack. I also don't like the attention that it attracts to that area. You know what I mean? I don't want, I don't want the focal point to be right up here or right down here or anything like that. If it was maybe an ankle bag or an arm bag, that'd be a different story. But right up here, I don't feel so comfortable, you know what I mean? And if I don't feel comfortable carrying a bag, I'm not going to use it. Chances are it's gonna end up sitting on my shelf or I'm gonna sell it or whatever the case may be, you know? But I think it looks so, so cute when it's on the shoulder, you know? But just using it this way or using it down here or whatever, I feel like I feel like I wouldn't be able to justify the price because I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to use it as much as I would like. You know what I mean? So that's why I said I felt, um, I felt that it would end up uh, sitting on my shelf for a little, a little bit longer than I would like. And I know some people aren't a fan of, uh, of fanny packs, whether it's Louis Vuitton or any other fashion house, because a lot of the other fashion houses have also come out with their versions. But uh, I mean, at the end of the day, a fanny pack has been around, or fanny packs have been around for a long, long, long time. And while they might not be popular always, they have always been around and people have always rocked them. You know what I'm saying? So it's all a matter of personal preference, but I do think it's super, super cute and I appreciate it from afar. Uh, but uh, I just, I couldn't do it justice. I couldn't do it justice. I felt like I was 
like I was suffocating it, like I was, like, I don't know, like you're, I don't know, it just, <laughs> it wasn't a pretty look. You know, I came out and <laughs> when, when I was at the boutique, I looked in the mirror, I'm like, oh no, 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 we gotta take this off right away before someone snaps a picture or what have you. So, <laughs> unfortunately, the bum bag, sorry, but you're not part, you're not gonna be part of my collection. Now, I'm sure you guys noticed that there are a few other bags that I didn't necessarily talk about that are very, very popular. Uh, the Louis Vuitton Capucine or the Fendi Peekaboo. Uh, and the reason why I didn't discuss those two bags is because um, they are on my radar. They are bags that I would consider adding to my collection. I've talked about that before. Another one is the Lady Dior. That's one that I go back and forth on all the time. So until I can, um, until I can like 99% say I don't think this bag will make it to the collection. That's why I didn't want to add it to the video because I still feel in my heart of hearts that those three bags um, are, uh, are ones that I would consider or silhouettes that I really, really appreciate that um, might make their way to the wish list. Now with everything that I've said, at the end of the day, none of us really know how a bag is going to work out for us until we experience it firsthand, until we have it in our hands and we're out and about, you know? But I still feel like there's always that, um, that gut instinct that kicks in. There's something in the back of your mind that tells you, you know what, maybe this bag won't end up working out for you, or maybe there's this detail that you're not really a fan of, or maybe this bag isn't really my jam, but I like it on someone else, you know? So I always like to try to listen to that gut instinct, but there have been times that I have been wrong and uh, that bag ends up being a favorite. So like I said before, sometimes we never truly know until we have the bag in our hot little hands. But that does it for my popular, um, popular bags I haven't added to my collection video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it and I I hope I was able to give you a little bit more information on these, but if you enjoyed this video, make sure and give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already and you would like to, please subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on the red button down below and hitting that bell so you're notified when I upload videos, which is anywhere from two to three times a week, and I'll see you guys later. And as always, make it a fabulous day or not, the choice is yours. Have a great day.